If you have your Bible, I invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. We're going to look at just a few verses in chapter 3 and chapter 1 of John's Gospel. We're going to end the message in the Advent series, A Season of Light. We're going to end the uh, series with a message, Light Has Come, John chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 19. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV and the ESV this morning, I just think it paints it in a, just, a, just a little bit better light than that translation this morning for us. John chapter 3, verse 19, I'll invite you to stand with me as we honor the Word of God this morning on Christmas Eve. <clears throat> the message, light has come. John chapter 3, verse 19. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Let's pray today. Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, this morning that every valley would be filled in, every mountain would be made low, and every crooked place within our heart would be made straight, that your word would find entrance not only into our eyes, but it would find entrance into our heart and that it would fill our lives with light and with love. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The day was Christmas Day, 1939. The situation was dark, very dark. In fact, a war with Germany was looming in the future. And it was there that King Henry, or King George VI, read a poem from Minnie Haskins, and it was broadcasted all throughout the British Empire, and these words were the opening words. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Those are very encouraging words to a nation who was about to go under very deep and dark distress, a very dark time in the British nation. And friends, may I say it's a very dark time in our nation this morning, but I have good news for you. The good news of the Advent season, the good news of Christmas is in three words this morning, light has come. Light has come into the world. And this light isn't just for the British Empire. This light wasn't just for the Jewish nation. This light, this message is for all nations. It's for all people. It's for all genders. It's for all races. It's for all social classes. This message is the message. Light has come. Do you know people are searching for light today? Ever since Halloween, people have been searching for light. I'm going to find the light in that right present. I'm going to find that light in that right piece of jewelry for my loved one. I'm going to find that light in that brand new, you fill in the blank. People are seeking light but church, you know it to be true. No matter what you receive for Christmas, it's going to be put away at some point, and it's going to leave you with a feeling of emptiness. Our hearts long for something deeper, something greater, and what our hearts long for is the light that Christ brings to our heart, the light that shines in the darkness. Two things I want to consider with you on this Christmas Eve morning. Very simply, the arrival of the light and the refusal of the light. Let's begin with the arrival of the light. John chapter 3, verse 19. John, Jesus, or John says this. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world. Light has come into the world. What is this conversation right here that, that they're having? Jesus is having a conversation and by the name of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was of the higher, you know, escalon of the church. 
He had all the robes. He had all the garbs. He had all the degrees. He had all the religion that a man could ever want. He was stuffed full of religion. But yet his heart was seeking something more. He knew he needed something more. And that's why he goes to visit Jesus in the darkness of night. And he has this conversation with Jesus. And then Jesus drops this on him and says, Hey, Nicodemus, light has come into the world. Light has come into the world. I thought the religion was the light. No. What's the light that Jesus is speaking about here in the Gospel of John? Let's say what it's not. This light is not a philosophy. This light is not a political ideology. This light is not just a sentimental concept that we're singing about this morning. This, con this light is not even a religion. This light is a person. This light is a spiritual reality. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What does it mean that this is a spiritual reality? This means this, guys, that in the darkness of my folly, Jesus is the source of all wisdom. In the darkness of deception, Jesus is the author of all truth. In the darkness of confusion, Jesus is the one who puts everything into order. Light has come into the world. This light is a reality. This light is also relational. It's not just a concept in our minds, ladies and gentlemen. It's a relational relationship. He desires to be with you, right? His name is Emmanuel, God with you, God with us. It means this, maybe you're lonely today. Maybe you feel the darkness of loneliness enveloping your heart. It means this, that God walks with you in that darkness. You go back into the shadows of sin. It's Jesus who lights the way back to the right path. When you don't know which way to go and you have a decision to make and you're like, I have no, no, I have no idea what to do. Jesus is the way, the light that guides you in the right direction. What is Christmas? Christmas is this. God was reaching down from heaven to each and every person saying, let me take your hand let me take you by the hand and show you the way back to God. That is what Christmas is all about. What do you hope to find tomorrow? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You hope to find presents. What present do you want to find under the tree? I didn't look it up. I don't know what the number one toy is this year, but I'm sure it's something. Somebody told me that ladies want these things called Uggs. I don't know what they are. They're some type of slipper, evidently. Um, but what do you expect to find underneath the tree? Hey, adults, what do you want this Christmas? Some people think, if I just have the love of that person, I'll be satisfied. If I could just have reconciliation with this family member, I'll have peace. Friends, there's only one way to have peace, and that is to have the Prince of Peace ruling and reigning in your heart. The only way to have peace is to be right with Jesus Christ. Friends, it is in Jesus that we receive what we really need, and that's light. We think we need all this stuff. I need this, I need that, I need this. Listen, what we need, what we want, the desire of our heart, the desire of our nation is the light of Jesus Christ. This light is a person. How many... If you would read the Gospel of John, John would tell you that the number one thing on the list, if the world had a list of the things that it needed the most, it wouldn't be a thing. It'd be a person. A person. Why a person? Why a light? Why all this stuff about light? This is why. Because we have a dark problem. That's why we need light. We have a dark problem problem. What's our dark problem? It's sin. Sin is our dark problem. Sin is what? It's simply missing the mark, right? You're not hitting the bullseye every single time. You might hit the bullseye sometimes, but you don't hit the bullseye every single time you pluck the arrow. 
We've all missed the mark, and I don't care if you make six figures or if you have six colonies. We've all sinned, the Bible says, and fall short of the glory of God. It is a universal problem. It's a universal darkness, and we need a solution. And that great solution is what we celebrate this morning on Christmas Eve, that the fact that light has come. We were separated from the Savior. We were separated from truth. We were separated from light, and now light has come. As the hymn writer said, there is a way back from the dark paths of sin. And that path, my dear friends, is paved in the blood of Jesus Christ. Why can you have a relationship with God? Not because you come to this church, not because you did some good works this Christmas. The only way you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ is by placing your faith in his light, in his work, in his blood. Friends, and when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, what do you receive? You receive light, you receive forgiveness, you receive restoration, and what do you find yourself doing? You find yourself, as the Bible says, being translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And friends, before we are through this morning, you have an opportunity to do just that, to go from darkness to, and to enter into light. How many people here say yes and amen? I was in darkness and now I'm in light. Hmm? Amen? Can anybody testify this morning? I was in darkness, and now Jesus Christ has entered my life, and things have changed. Yes, that is what Christmas is about. That's the greatest gift that is ever given. And you can't find that in a rehab. You can't find that at Walmart. You can't find that at Amazon. You can find that in the person of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And he is the present of the season, friends. He is the gift. Light has come. That's the good news. Here's the bad news. The refusal of the light. Look at the second part of that verse. But, but, people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. People loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Friends, I'm sure you have people in your family People in your community, people that you work with, they have these high, lofty arguments about why they don't believe in God. Oh, they have all their theories. They have all their reasons. And Jesus says, you know what? I'm going to put all that aside for one moment, and let me hit you straight in the heart this morning. And he says, let me tell you the problem. The problem is not intellectual. The problem is a problem of the heart. He says, men loved darkness. You see that? It is not a head problem. It's a heart problem. It's not an intellectual problem. It's a moral problem. Jesus said, you can put all your arguments over here. Jesus says, here's the reason you don't want to receive the light. Here's the reason you don't want to come to the Savior. It's because you love darkness. What does the Bible say in Psalm 14? I'm studying it in my personal devotion time right now. It says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Where does the fool say there's no God? Not in his HUD, but in his heart. He says in his heart, why? Because his deeds are evil. He doesn't want to accept the light because he's in the darkness. Well, John gives us a little bit more detail about why they refused the light and who this light was. If you go back a couple pages to John chapter 1, in John chapter 1, verses 10 to 11, you read about who this light is. Let me read John chapter 1, verse 10. Powerful verses. He was in the world. There's the incarnation. And the world was made through him. There's deification. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Those are some of the saddest words in your Bible right there. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. John tells us two things about this light. He says, first of all, he wasn't known. And second of all, he wasn't received. He wasn't known and he wasn't received. And maybe you've come in here today thinking that Jesus is on the same platitude as Santa Claus. Maybe you think Jesus is on the same level as a good moral 
teacher? Who is this Jesus? Who is this baby born in Bethlehem? Who is this man hanging on a cross? Well, John tells us here in verse 10, number one, he's human. He was just like us. Look at that, verse 10. He was in the world. That speaks to Christmas. He was in the world. He came as a man, born among us. It's the incarnation. John says, the word became flesh, and he dwelt among us. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. He is deity clothed with humanity. Can you explain that? I can't explain that. It's way beyond my comprehension to try to explain that. That's what Hark the Herald Angel sings. What does it say? Offspring of a virgin's womb, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Incarnate in the flesh, God in the flesh. So what does that mean? Well, it means, Mr. Jehovah Witness, that Jesus wasn't a spirit. Jesus is not an angel. Hey, Mr. Mormon, Jesus is not the brother of for Jesus is God, 100% God, 100% man, fully God, fully man. Look at verse 10. He was in the world, Christmas, but it says the world was made through him. Excuse me? In the world, the world was made through him. A mere man just doesn't make the world. That speaks to his deity. Jesus is the eternal creator, sustainer of the universe. He's not just the representation of God. He is God. And you say, Jesus never said that. Yes, Jesus said that. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, I and the Father are one. He said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Jesus, the name, his name is what? Emmanuel, God with us. He had to be fully God, and he had to be fully man. Why? To solve the sin problem. We needed someone to be fully God and fully man. Why? So we could re represent humanity to God and God to humanity and step in in God's stead and be our substitute. That's the only way, guys. That is what Christmas, the incarnation, is all about. John says he was in the world, yet the world was made by him powerful. And here's the, here's the worst part. Here's the grievous part. The world rejected him. They rejected him. Listen to this. They missed Christmas. They missed it. He was there walking among them, and they missed it. It says they didn't know him. The better translation of that is they didn't want to know him. They didn't want to know him. The wise men came, they pulled out their Bible, oh yeah, he was born in Bethlehem, hey, the star in the sky, yeah, we saw that, we know the scriptures, but uh, we don't want to know that. They rejected him, they refused it. Think about the statement, guys, for one moment on this Christmas morning, God walked among us and we missed it. That's, that's unbelievable. He walked among us and we missed it. The creator was ignored by the creation. The life giver was rejected by the living. The gift giver was taken for granted by the gift getters. Listen, what did man do? What did we do? We rejected Jesus. We pushed him to the side. He gave us the very breath in our lungs. And what did we use with our, what did we breathe out? Crucify him, crucify him. He gave us the heart to beat in our heads. Beat in our bodies. And what do we use our hearts for? Praise the gods of silver, stone, gold, and silver. He gave us intellects, and he gave us minds. But what do we do? We use those minds to go into the darkness and conclude there's no God. Light has come, but men love darkness rather than light. And what happens when you re refuse the light? Well, Romans chapter 1 tells us you suppress the truth, you push it down, and when you push it down, you have to replace the truth. You replace the truth. And Satan knows it very well, that each and every one, each and every life is searching for something. 
Your heart is longing for life, and Satan knows it. So what Satan will do, the enemy of our souls, he will offer you an alternative. And there are many alternatives today, but let me tell you one of the largest alternatives today. And I sent an article to a few people in the congregation. I thought it was fascinating myself. This is the, this is the life that Satan offers you. And I can guarantee every person in this sanctuary knows at least one person like this. At least one. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Spiritual, but I'm not religious. I'm a spiritual person, okay? Listen, the article said that 22% of Americans say they are spiritual, but they're not religious. That's almost a quarter of the population, people. So what does it mean to be spiritual but not religious? Now, this is from a different article. Let me give it to you from the horse's mouth, okay? This is from a lady's testimony. Her name was Mary, and it's from 2017 in Christianity Today. And she said these words, I claimed I was spiritual but not religious, meaning this, I could be good without God. I could be good without God. That explains a lot of people's philosophy today. Friends, there is only one way to be good before a holy God, and that is through the Son, Jesus Christ. We will not get to God based on my righteousness. I will not get to God based on anything else except the righteousness of that is found in Jesus Christ. She says, I could be good without God. She says, she goes on, I dabbled in the paranormal, meditation, psychedelic drugs, crystals, and all the rest. I was your paramount party girl. There you go. All this in the pursuit of light and freedom. But what she found was darkness. She says, quote, I was seeking happiness self-fulfillment, and freedom from restraint, all the while deluding myself about my own goodness. She goes on to say this, quote, In my mind, I thought I was free. But in certain moments, in the middle of the night, or in the darkness of depression, I could see glimpses of who I really was. I was not growing freer. My heart was growing harder. My emotions darker and my mind more confused. And then light came. Light came to Mary's life in the gospel of Jesus Christ, and light flooded her life. And guess what today, guys? There is, she is more free than she could ever imagine because light has come. The message of Advent is simple. Jebediah asked me at the beginning of the season, hey, what's Advent, Pastor? I can answer you that in three words. Light has come. And Jesus is that light. He was the light born on the wood, in the wooden stable to die on a wooden cross. Why? To save sinners like me. To save sinners like you. To save sinners. That he loved the world. He didn't come to condemn the world, to save us from darkness, darkness within our own hearts, darkness without, and eventually, if we reject the light, outer darkness forever and ever. And friends, if you refuse the invitation of light, the Bible says we will find ourselves in that place of outer darkness forever and ever. But you don't have to. Why? Because light has come. And that light is for every one of us. I began with a poem that said this, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. The Bible tells us light has come. The only question for us is this, Will you place your hand into the hand of God, and let him lead you into the light this Christmas Eve.
And as the worship team comes up and we close out with, uh, it came upon a midnight clear. Just want to pray before we sing. Heavenly Father, we thank you that light has come. And that light is not within ourselves. That is a light that we can't produce. It is a light totally outside of ourselves. And I just pray, Lord, right now, in the quietness of this Christmas Eve morning, maybe someone here is like Mary. They think they can be good without God. But they know the truth is that their lives are only becoming really darker. There's only more confusion. Their hearts are growing colder and harder by the day. I pray, Lord, that this morning would be a day where light dawns on their life and that they would simply receive the light of Christmas. Lord, it's not about jumping through a lot of hoops. It's not about becoming a member of a church. It's simply acknowledging that I need light and that I'm in darkness and that I need a Savior to pull me out of that darkness and give me life and light. And I pray, Lord, for it, if there is anybody here this morning, Lord, that they would simply acknowledge that, that they are in darkness, that Jesus is the light. He is the Son of God. He came to die upon a cross, to be raised to life on the third day, and that he is coming again to judge the living and the dead. I pray that today would be the day where they step out of the darkness, they take the hand of God, and they are welcomed into the light and into the life that Jesus brings. Father, we thank you that light has come, and we praise you for that light. In Jesus' name we pray. If you'd like to stand and join me, this is number 18.